Welcome to the Andrea Giovino Show. Before we get started again, I really want to thank all the fans, all the people that subscribed. I love the comments. I try to get back to all the comments and answer all of you. I definitely appreciate you subscribing and taking the time to subscribe. Um, we have a lot of great stories. Today I have a guest that she doesn't really do interviews, but I'm really close with the family, and I asked her to come on because I think she has an amaz amazing, amazing story. Um, Francesca Moderano, George Moderano's daughter. Hello, everybody. Hi, honey. Hi. How are you? Good. So, Francesca, the reason I wanted you to come on is because I know your dad really well, as you know, for many years, and um, I wanted, I never knew how to approach your story because I know the, there's a hard story there. Like, of course, your dad did 32 years. How old were you when your dad went away? I was three and a half going on four. Who, who was, was your mom? My mom and my brother. Your mom and your brother. Mm -hmm. And through the years, did, when you were little, did your mom take you to see your dad? Yeah. You did. So you knew, did you understand your dad was incarcerated? Yes. You did understand. <laughs> yeah, it was in college. We know it was in college. Um, Were you afraid at like going to a penitentiary? No, not at all. My mother kept it very open and mm -hmm. honest she did. with us as kids. She didn't hide anything. Always wanted to make sure if we were okay. You know, we're going to see daddy. Like if we had any type of feelings. Because mm -hmm. the environment's weird when you go there you know you're getting frisked as a child they're looking through your clothing you get patted down so, it's so it can affect children in different ways for me and my brother it didn't affect us at well, all Well, because i think the line of where you came from like your grandfather your father's father long john moderano was you know very recognized mob guy and then your father was a very respected and still is very respected you know Italian guy in the streets and um I think that like so as you were growing up I'm, I'm sure your mom had it very hard mm. she had to have it very hard yeah because she she's worked raising three jobs and me and my brother really like we raised ourselves you raised yourself they called us like the latchkey kids we would come home and my mom would have little meals for us like I would have to cook them and she would have them prepped, you know, put the oven on 375 and That's olive oil, marinate chicken. And I would have my little step stool and I would be up there cooking. And my brother would, we would do our homework together. So as a, my brother raised me in a male point of view because mm -hmm. it was always just me and him. My mom worked all the time. My dad was in jail. So there was, we so had a I lot of you, family I know around. you and your brother were very close. Super close. Very, very close. Yeah. And um, so as you were growing up as like now the teenage years, how did that work for you with, your, again, guys in the neighborhood, they know your father's incarcerated. Who did you date? It's actually funny yeah. <laughs> because, because I don't, I forgot, I don't want, on one of my, one of my videos on my podcast, somebody wrote to me, I dated the daughter of George Moderano. Okay. <laughs> Somebody said that to me on the. That's so I, 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 Yeah, I didn't. I was like, oh, okay. God, I'm 44 now. You really want to take it back? Um, that's funny. Uh, so, your teenage <laughs> years, were you give your mom trouble? Were you acting out with anger? Did you get involved? No. Who kept? No. I just. I really never let it affect. It just didn't affect me. Okay. Like I would have my moments, of course, and my in my own right in my own space but it just yeah it never really affected me it was just the norm what about when um what happened with your brother my brother got killed in a motorcycle accident how old was he 25 25 yeah that had to be very hard it was terrible uh, my mother had just passed away nine months prior okay. from cancer she had stage four lung cancer went to her brain and so within a year she was gone was she living when he passed away yes no, I'm sorry. No. My brother was living when my mom passed away. Mo okay. So my mom passed away first. Nine months later, my brother got killed in a motorcycle accident. Oh, God. So you had to deal with it. Now, your father wasn't home. No. <laughs> so you had to deal with all of this. Mm -hmm. I could see it's hard for you to talk about. Yeah. Um, as well as my grandfather after that. We had his murder in 2002. 
Oh, so it was like mom, brother, grandfather. Right. Now, when your dad was away, did your grandfather make sure you guys were okay? Like, always. Always, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I used to come and visit him as well. Yeah. Because he was on State Road, which is in Philadelphia. the normal, you know, your line of prisons in Philadelphia. Right, right. And they held him there for 18 years. So we used to go and visit him. Is that South Philly? Yeah. Um, no, that's up in the Northeast. Okay. But it is Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Um, so, wh- because the little bit that I heard about that, like with your brother and your mother, and I was always like, what, what about Francesca? Who took care of her? Like, how did, how did that all... I took care of me. (laughs) Yeah, that that's got to be. I've just I've always took care of me. I just I don't know. I know, but like because you all you really had was your brother. Mm -hmm. I I mean, it's my brother and my mom. Like me and my mom were so close. Yeah, my best friend, and we talked about everything. Like we didn't have a negative relationship because a lot of mothers and daughters sometimes don't see eye to eye. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, we didn't have that. Like. I slept in bed with her until I was eight, like, till she passed away. Really? I was like, That's how my daughter, now yeah. I always look, you know, I mean, my daughter's mom now, she has her own kids, and she's seven months pregnant. Um, but we are like, we're like best friends. Yeah. We, we're together every day, mm-hmm. you know? And I don't know if that's an Italian thing. I don't know. <laughs> it be, I it think could so. be an Italian thing. Because my mom, yeah, we were super close, and... She just, I don't know, she did an amazing job of normalizing everything. How old was she when she passed? She just turned 50. Oh, my God, that's so young. Yeah. That's really young. So when she passed, that had a really... Um, It threw me for a loop. loop. I mean, (laughs) it had to. Yeah, it was... um, It was a lot. And then Raymond right after that, that's what put me over, like... Yeah. My brother passing was really what. Yeah, you know, no. I mean, yeah, but that's that's I know because I lost a brother um, when he was very young, twenty seven, same that that age. They have yeah. their whole life ahead of them. It's very very difficult. Um, so now, within that year, you lose your mother and you lose your brother. Mm-hmm. Your father's incarcerated. Mm-hmm. Did you keep the connection with your dad? Yes. Did you continue to go see your dad? Always. Oh, so you did. So you had that bond. Even Mm -hmm. though there wasn't a bond because he wasn't there, your mom helped you to develop a bond. Yeah, we always had a bond, but our bond was through a visiting room. Right, right. You know, with the rules and the regulations, sometimes there was different prisons, there was phones. Right. And and just a, you know, plexiglass. Right. But other than that, it was physical visits. But the rules and the regulations, you can't touch, you can't hold a hand, you can't hug for more than half a second. And they want to break you apart like it's a huge deal. I know. That is so hard. That is really so hard. And that's got to be really harder on kids because, um, like, even the hugging, you're not allowed. Yeah. It's and like, it angers you towards the and, system. And, like, humans need that. Yeah. They, they need that. You need human. Like, you need that you human need, yeah. connection. They don't allow it. Especially when my father was in Coleman. Like, when I was getting older, they mm-hmm. made it more adamant they, for separate. us to completely stay, like, I'm talking, or, or, like, fingertip, nothing. But when I was younger, it was a little bit more lenient mm-hmm. with, like, me being able to, like, you know, lean on his shoulder, things like right. that. Right, but so but when you were, um went to school or, or even, like, middle school, high school, you know... I had to get two jail calls. I know, one in the morning... And <laughs> when I made sure I got home from school at a certain time, like I always made sure I was home to but get the his phone from call. Your yeah. father. Isn't that unbelievable? That's wonderful. Yeah, but like, I'm, like me and my brother would be like, Daddy's calling 6, 6.30. So you knew when he would call. Yeah. Now, did was it hard for you? Did your, like, because your friends, did they ever say, well, where's your dad? Did you lie yeah. or did you tell the truth? No, I always told the truth, and that's why I was never allowed in, anyone, in anyone's homes. Really? So my friendships, my mom moved us to the suburbs outside of the city. Okay. Um, growing up, so. Um, did you go they, to Archbishop Wood? I did. Okay, it's so funny because when you when your dad um, and you come to visit me this summer, we have to stop at this pizzeria because the guy just said to me, the owner, he knows you and he knows your brother. He said he went to school with you, and he owns a pizzeria in my area. Okay. And. Because at first I didn't know. I don't know what pizzeria it is. Giuseppe's? Um, no, Do- it's called Dominic's. His name is okay. Frank. He's a tall guy. His name Cassanti? is. Casfanti? 
I don't know his last name, but I said I'm going to be seeing him. Is he real them. tall? Yes. Dark hair? Yes. Italian? Yeah, his name's Francisco Castante, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I know he follows me on Instagram, yeah. so I can look his name up later. I think he just hit me up about you in Messenger, and I really okay, didn't read the whole thing. That's him. Okay, So yes. he said he knows your brother. Yeah, he was, he, um, he was... He knew your brother well. He was two years older than me, and then my brother's four years older than me. So when I was a freshman, my brother was a senior in high school. Okay. And there was a huge Italian community in Archbishop Wood and, like, up in Warminster, Bucks County. Because I'm not far from there. And, like, straight, I'm in Bucks County. Yeah. And there's a huge Italian community. Right. Like, I went to school with a lot of kids that fluently just spoke so Italian. When, when he, so that was the click that we clicked with because their family's got so it. So he owns <laughs> Dominic's Pizza in the area where I'm in mm-hmm. and uh, Doylestown area. Yeah. And, and when he said to me... Um, George Moderano, he had a son. I know th- that he was incarcerated, but he had a son. But I didn't remember that you had a brother. And then I said, well, he has the daughter. He said, yeah, Fran- Francesca. Yeah. <laughs> I said, oh, yeah, then it, it is them. Yeah. So we have to go there when you come Definitely. down to visit me to go eat there because I, I told him. Because I'll message on yeah, for coming yes, out. Yes, <laughs> yes. So you come out because he said he has a lot of memories with mm-hmm. your brother. So that'll be nice for you, too. Yeah, they too. were very friendly. Yeah, that'll be nice for you, too. Yeah. So, um I know now you and your dad are very close. Super close. Yeah, you guys are like thick as thin. You do everything together, <laughs> yeah. which is lovely. I, yeah, it's something I just waited for. I know. Like, and I love the especially fact... Especially a little girl with our dad, you know? I love the fact that the both of you are so close with each other. You know, like he's a, you're, you got his back, he's got your back. Yeah. And that's all you have is you and him. Mm-hmm. So, so it's really nice. Yeah. Um, and I think that... Just knowing you, and you know we've had dinner, and I, you know, know you pretty well right now. Um, you've really did well for yourself after what, you. what, all that you've been through, Francesca. I mean, a Thank lot. You, I, I, that. I know, I know you minimize it a lot. I know that. Yeah. But it had to be very hard, you know. It wasn't an easy journey, and of course, every human has their trials and tribulations with themselves. But I mean, yeah, just I, the, I, the I whole it. thing with yeah, your father <laughs> not being there, your mother passing, your brother passing, all that trauma, all that shock, you know, what the family goes through, the yeah. loss of, like you're saying, you know, just what the kids go through going into the big prison, mm-hmm. and you actually made that your norm, which mm-hmm. isn't normal. No, it's, it's not, not normal. That's not what you were supposed no, to go it's, through. It's not normal You You, all. like, well, she was just, like, I always... I'm not, I don't really ever go back into the past. I'm always, right. let's move forward. Which is good. But it's just, I always just wondered, like, what it would have been like to have him home for all that. And well, that's what I'm saying. You had cheated with being a little so girl cheated. that had the dad. And just it's let me legal take it. now. <laughs> and so it's, you kept 33 years of a man from raising his family and being there for his wife. 33 years. That's like. Your whole life. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, he yeah. he wasn't there your whole life. Yeah, I'm 44 now. Exactly. So. I mean, and he came out in 2000. So it was most of your life. He was not mm-hmm. there. You're knowing him now. You're really knowing him now. Yeah. <laughs> Having the conversation, yes. seeing what conversations, he's about. Conversations, like living how habits. He is, you know. Yeah, um, like what he likes to eat in the morning. Yeah, and just yeah. your, like your everyday routine, which everyone knows about their mother and father that way. But you didn't. No, not at all. You're learning now in mm-hmm. your older age, in his older age, who he is because he wasn't there for open school week yeah. or to take you to a park or to take you for an ice cream or anything. Nothing. You know, you're talking, I know a lot of stories, even with my husband wasn't there for my children. They, he was gone like 11 years of their life and my kid didn't even know who they were. Oh, but yeah. 32 years, 33 years, that's a lot. That's mm-hmm. your life. And you have to make sure that relationship, even... You know, growing up as a as a female mm-hmm. and still making a relationship with your father after my mom passed, after my brother passed, because, you know, he has strong feelings as well right? about certain things that happen, and he might not fully understand because he wasn't here to see it. Right, right. And still maintain a really tight bond and not have any arguments or difference of opinions, and me and him never had that but he you, i think your dad having to i think the worst thing on earth the worst thing on earth is 
losing a child. Yeah. That's, the, that's the worst thing a parent can endure, is to, to lose a child, let alone you're not there. Right. Let alone you weren't there to bond with your child. Mm-hmm. That's got to be very hard. Extremely, because my it's brother was very, like his understudy. Hard. Right. Like they were so much alike, yeah. their personalities, their sense of humor, like just actions, the way they walk. I mm-hmm. see it. Because right. I was be, blessed right. enough to, right. you know, watch my brother for 25 years and him being my right hand man. Like, and I, I'm like, I'll see my father do things. And I'll say to myself, oh, he looks just like Raymond. Well, <laughs> so is there anything that you would like to maybe say to like a younger audience of, you know, um, it doesn't matter what culture they're in that their father being incarcerated, if you could give them any tips of what they can do for themselves or how you... My biggest tip to just give out to any of the youth these days is get to know yourself and God. And once you are good with who that person is, who you look in the mirror, everything else in your life is going to flow, fall suit. Mm-hmm. You know, as long as you have God in your life and you really believe in yourself and you love yourself as a human, regardless of all the messed up stuff that we do have going on in the world, mm-hmm. nothing can break you. No, and I feel, I always say thank you, Jesus, because I wouldn't even have this platform if it wasn't for God. Mm-hmm. I feel like the Lord, I'm a, I'm a practicing Catholic, and I always say that, um, you know, my church is very important. My, um, my religion is very important to me, and... I feel that from a very little girl, I always felt that I had a very hard background, also a very traumatic background, but there was always someone there, and always God is in my life. Mm-hmm. I feel him there. I know he's there. Yes. So I think that in itself, if young, young people have to have that, especially mm-hmm. now, because that's what keeps you going. Mm-hmm. And you have to have, like, from your core, mm-hmm. know you're a good person and... Talk to yourself every day in a godlike manner. Yes. Everything else is just going to follow suit. Yes. You're going to deal with crap every day on your shoe, no yeah. matter where it falls from. Shit happens every day, mm-hmm. all day long. And you, it's like I just, with my spirituality, not necessarily religion, just spirituality and me and myself mm-hmm. and manifesting of what I want to know and what's ahead of me, like, I think you have to have a good, strong it. sense of yourself, mm-hmm. you know, and, and feel comfortable th- in your skin. This could break you, yeah. like break you. A hundred percent. I mean, like all that you've endured and all that you've mm-hmm. been through. And then just to be standing there alone, one person with the rest of the, he's there, but he's and not then here. You have to figure your it out. Your dad's here, mm-hmm. but he's not there. He's not so there. So like you're just alone and you're like, you're oh, alone. by the way, oh, you're, you're 20, that could really you're, break you're you. 20 years old, just yeah. turning 21. And there's nobody there. No. No one. Figure out college, school, where to live, houses being sold. But my mom passed, and it's like, okay, well. What do you do? What's my next chapter? Like, where do I go? What do I do? And you look in the mirror, and you figure it out day by day. Yeah. So that may, that you're a very strong woman. You're a strong, <laughs> strong woman. I watched it by my, like, my mother, if she wasn't strong, I, it, I didn't have a great example I admire, my mo- I really admire my mother you. And my, grandfa- and my grandmother was very, both of my grandmothers, mm-hmm. just super strong. And my mother as well, just watching her, bust her butt, working two jobs, mm-hmm. raising two children. And that's what we do and as women. And she raised an amazing two children, even though my brother got his life cut short. Right. She raised a good, a well, good, a good boy. boy. Mm-hmm. And I'm not just saying that because he's no, my brother. He of just course. Like, anybody that knew my brother Raymond, like. Not right. one bad word about him. So he had an amazing soul and a great heart. So she instilled that in us. Which is wonderful. And um, I'm really glad you came on today. I, I'm so happy you came because I wanted people to hear your side of the story. Thank you. George Matarano's daughter. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Francesca. Thank you for having me. And thank you for uh, viewing my show. Continue to subscribe. Leave comments. Let me know what you want to see. Thumbs up. Thank you, Jesus. We'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.